Hi, this is Carl, and I've got not really a product review per se, but a video on some considerations about technology you might take with you if you're traveling and, you know, kind of figure out how do you right size the technology you take with you. Now, I will note that I am a, a writer, an author, I produce videos, I produce audio. So my needs may be different from yours and it's very important that you take that into consideration. I think most of us, if we travel, we need to absolutely right size our technology. So here's some experiences I've had and I wanna talk about three specific products, including one that you just can't get anymore, but it is what it is. So let me just start by saying, I travel with a beefy laptop. This is an HP ZBook. It's a 14 inch monitor and it's a pretty good size. It's not too bad for traveling. It fits on an airplane. I can actually open it and get some work done. I had a 17 inch for a while and I have to say it was too big for convenient travel. I couldn't actually take it out on the airplane without pissing off everybody in the row. So that didn't work for me. Plus it just literally, it was just too big for work when I travel. Now the 14 inch gives me a good size monitor. It's not spectacular, but the Z book, which is a great line from HP. It's got a great screen, great keyboard, I'm not a real fan of the touchpad, but I travel with the Logitech mouse that I plug into the little USB port. I find that this is as beefy as I need it to be. Mine has 64 gigs of RAM and a gargantuan uh, all uh, solid state hard drive. So it's very fast, boots very well. And this one, the ZBook, is fast enough that I can do anything I need to with Photoshop, with video, with audio, everything. Like this is a desktop replacement laptop. So that's, that's the ZBook. But I'm not here to talk about the ZBook. I, I wanna talk about alternatives to your big laptop. So let's say for example, that you're gonna go on vacation. You want to occasionally check up on email. You wanna browse the web. You want a screen that's big enough to see, but it doesn't have to be full size and so forth. What's a good laptop to just take with you to get stuff done? So this is a tiny little HP that I carried for about 12 years on and off. I carried it less and less as time went by. I bought this little machine, which you can't get anymore, but I bought it about 12 years ago simply to take on the road as my daughter and I went looking for colleges for her. And so as we would go around visiting colleges, I didn't want to be doing a lot of work. I didn't want to be editing video or audio or whatever. I wanted to check my email and occasionally be able to actually see the screen. I find the cell phone to be just a little too small for true entertainment purposes. I'll show you this machine, but just know that they don't make them anymore. And I'm Actually, this is its last uh, uh, moments of life before it gets donated to a uh, charity. So this little HP is actually a, it converts into a tablet. So that's kind of handy. So it's a tablet size, tablet shape. Now, 12 years ago, the Windows version <laughs> of a tablet operating system eh, kind of sucked, but it's handy enough and it came with Windows and was able to upgrade all the way to Windows 10. All of the computing obviously and the speakers are on the sides here. It's all built into that. This is simply an extra battery and a keyboard. I don't even know what the model number of this thing is, but again, they don't make them anymore, but it was a handy little thing. Super small processor. I think it was a Celeron, maybe an early Atom. So it's a good size, at least for me, for traveling. I can open it anywhere. It's not intended to be a production machine. This is not a desktop replacement. This is not intended to open Adobe Acrobat or the full suite. It's not intended to edit video. It probably will do audio okay, but just as a second thing to have around when you travel, it's pretty good. And then I thought, well, I need something a little bit smaller and much more full-featured, and that's when I 
decided to go to a compute stick. Now this is actually a product you can buy today on Amazon. There's many varieties and I've heard that it's going to be into life, but it's still available today. This is a compute stick. This is an entire computer with an Atom processor that's actually pretty fast. It has a, an HDMI port on the end. So you literally just plug that straight into the back of a television and you have yourself a computer. And of course, the size of the monitor just depends on the size of the television you plug it into. Now, this worked great. The first time I used one of these, an older version of this, I took it to Australia, plugged it into the back of the television, had me a nice 50 inch monitor, and it was all good. Now, obviously this doesn't have a keyboard or a mouse. I got a little USB adapter for micro SD cards that I can plug right into it because uh, it's got a couple of USB ports. So one of the things I do when I travel is I'll plug, uh, sometimes use a mouse that plugs into one of those USB ports, but also a keyboard. I got this great Logitech K400 keyboard. It's got a touchpad. Again, I'm not a super fan of the touchpad, but it works. It's all in one. It's pretty small, travels very well. You can just turn it off. It will connect up to the PC stick, which allows you to have a full-size keyboard. And of course, you got the big monitor of whatever TV you're working with. So, you know, it's not a bad thing after all. It's more of a pain in the neck than it looks like, and here's why. Just very simply, you have to have an extension HDMI because you're not going to be super close. Sometimes the TV is mounted up on the wall. Sometimes it's not very convenient at all. And you need to have an extension so that you can get the PC stick plugged into the back of the TV. For whatever reason, there's zero battery available on this thing, so it has to be plugged in at all times. That's a real inconvenience for me. And I, to be honest, if this thing were, you know, twice as big, if it were the size of a cell phone and had some battery in it, I'd be okay with that. This does have a native slot for a micro SD card. So you can have as much memory as you choose to have. It also has Bluetooth. So it will connect up to your audio devices and other things. If you have a Bluetooth keyboard, it'll connect up to that as well. I've used this several times as a rule, I find it to be very, very handy. Now, the fact that I got to travel with all this other stuff doesn't make it as convenient as it sounds. So sometimes when I don't need the computing power, when I'm okay with less computing power, it makes sense to just go back to another very small laptop. I will say as a bit of a side note, once I got this carrying case for the PC stick, I also got an Amazon uh, stick so that I can take Amazon Prime with me no matter where I am. And of course, that's got its own little adapter. So <laughs> that it fits nicely into the same carrying container. And that way I've got my Amazon wherever I go. I've been told that this is the place to tell you to like and subscribe and push the little thanks button down below. That's totally up to you. Remember, my focus here is on an alternative to the big laptop. So what I settled on, believe it or not, is a little gateway. I don't think I've owned a gateway in, oh wait, I've never owned a gateway before. <laughs> but I found this little one at Walmart for under a couple hundred bucks. And it is, you know, good enough. It gets done what I needed to do. Plus, it's a beautiful blue color. This is a model GWTC116-2BL. It's got a Celeron processor and it's one of these form factors that it twists all the way around, which I think has always been the stupidest idea in computing since it was invented. It's way too heavy to be a tablet because the keyboard actually weighs something and has a battery in it. But if you find a use for this, good, right? That's, that's awesome. I think it's not a bad stand if you want to point it away from you and watch a movie or something like that. But for me, I use a laptop, you know, as a laptop. 
comes with the Microsoft Office Suite, kind of that lighter version that works through the web. So it does install something locally, but for the most part, uh, when you hear about Office going down for a while, that's, this is the Office that goes down. <laughs> So this is not the full monster product that's uh, going to take up a bunch of disk space and then loads entirely on your system. This is an 11 inch screen, so it's not super big. Again, easy to carry, pretty lightweight and not bad as a second machine. So again, you have to figure out what you're going to do when you travel. Are you going to be actually producing something important? Are you going to do something that takes a lot of computing power? Or are you going to browse the web, respond to email, and maybe write a note or two, and you need a decent sized keyboard? If that's what you want, this is a great alternative. And there are many other machines this size. This is basically the, the new kind of minimum size these days is an 11 inch monitor. And for me, it works great. Again, I draw that line between whether or not I'm producing content or whether I'm just, you know, doing the half hour a day to catch up on email and make sure that the world is not falling apart while I travel. So this little gateway has both a fast USB port and a little micro SD card reader, and it's got a slower USB port and an HDMI, a mini HDMI port. So, you know, if you want to travel with some cables and do some other stuff with it, you can theoretically do all that. Gotta say, if all you're gonna do is go to a meeting and run one PowerPoint and get out of there, this is a great machine for doing that. You just have to figure out how you're gonna get your HDMI out to somebody else's monitor or projector if they don't have a projector that connects through the Windows projection system, then you gotta carry an HDMI adapter with you. At the end of the day, it's up to you, of course, but you have to figure out which technology works for you, what exactly are your needs, and right size a good computer for the road. Now for me, again, that road computer is a second computer. It's one that if I lost it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I do have a way to connect into my other machines remotely, so I can get into them from quote unquote anywhere, but I need a device to do that. I also recommend a pretty low end device for this kind of travel because you never know when somebody is going to spill an entire glass of wine on your tiny little portable laptop. Yes, it does happen. Of course that only happened once, but you know, we live in a world where you just don't know what's going to happen next, especially when you're traveling. Part of being flexible is having small devices that are flexible enough, but powerful enough to get the job done. I will say my bias has been to be an HP person for many, many, many years, but at the low end right now, what I find from Gateway is good enough to do everything I need to do on a vacation type travel or a low work travel where I'm just going to go someplace, make one presentation and then be on vacation works totally fine for me. The compute stick is less flexible than you would think simply because it has a full size HDMI, which might work in some of the modern projectors, but you got to carry all that other stuff with it. So it's not a bad alternative because it can fit into a very small space, but you just have to remember, you're always going to be trading convenience for usability. So find what works for you, try a few things. Almost all of these now, depending on where you buy it, you can return within 30 or 90 days and get your money back. So feel free to try these. I do recommend that you have an alternative for travel so that you've always got just the right amount of computing power with you. To the extent I can, I will put links to all of this stuff down below and you can decide whether or not you want to check them out or whether you want to find another alternative. If money is not an option, well, there are some really nice high-end systems that you can travel with, but at the low end, we're now at a point where there's some amazing computing technology for a very small amount of money. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Palchuk wishing you the best of luck in all of your travels.